Well, good morning. We're so happy to have you here this morning for our final week in our missions and evangelism uh, sermon study this week, uh, this month. And so we just want to thank you for coming to church today. We have a really special guest here for you today, too, to share not only on the topic of evangelism, but to really share on what evangelism looks like on a world scale, on a scale of missions, the scale which our Lord Jesus Christ called each and every one of us to. And so, like I said, we're just so happy to have Simon here today, who's getting ready to to preach to us about missions. But before we go into that, let's get started with our worship today with a call to worship. Our call to worship is out of Psalm 96. It's verses 1 through 6. And starting in verse 1, it says, Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord and bless his name. Tell of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among all the peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods, for all the gods of the peoples are worthless idols. But the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Let's pray. Dear Father, thank you so much that you are alive. Father, it's not that you're condescending people to say, that their gods are worthless idols. But Father, it's to make a point. Gods made out of stone and wood have no power to save, for they are not alive. They are inventions of our mind and serve no purpose to sanctify or rescue us from sin. But Father, you, you are alive. Beauty fills your sanctuary. Splendor and majesty are before you. And you created the heavens Because of that, you have the ability to save. Father, we pray today that our hearts will be open to understand the importance of your word, the word of a living God. Father, we pray that it would be the center of our life and that we take your word and treat it as instructions for living. Father, as we offer this worship to you, we pray that it would would satisfy you, that you would bless it. Not out of the works of our hands do we offer it, but merely by a proclamation from you that by the blood of Christ, sinners can offer acceptable worship. Father, we pray today, and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, let's go ahead and begin our service today with worship. This song is In Christ Alone. the world. 
bursting forth in glorious day up from the grave he rose again and as he stands in victory since curses lost his grip on me for i am his and his mine brought with the precious blood of christ no guilt in life no fear in death this is the power of christ in me from life's first cry to find no breath Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell, no skin of man can ever pluck me from his hand till he returns or calls me home. Here in the power of Christ I'll stand. No power of hell, no skin of man. Let's pray. Dear Father, thank you so much for the opportunity to worship. A a praise, an outcry of our soul of joy. We have been saved and rescued from the sin that we see ourselves in every day. And Father, it is this thankful heart. We, We just got done celebrating Thanksgiving. It is this thankful heart that allows us to endure all sufferings. As Paul said, For the present sufferings cannot compare to the glories of eternity. It's not even worth thinking about the sufferings today. Because what you have promised is so good. And Lord, it it is that worship that is the impetus for us to share your word through missions. The world needs to hear you because of the joy available to them and the deep despair that awaits them without you. So, Father, we pray for your blessings on today's service. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, as you may have gathered from the beginning of our service today, we actually have a guest speaker. Uh, Our guest speaker today is Simon Sito. He's a beloved member of our church, of course, but not merely a member, but he also serves in various leadership capacities. Uh, For one, for my personal ministry, the youth group, he's actually uh, one of the most important counselors that we have. He's been faithfully serving ever since I got here in youth. Uh, I think he's actually been serving for a lot longer in our youth group, even before I came to this church. And he serves in various other capacities with me, meeting with me weekly to uh, sharpen me, to make sure that our ministries are moving forward productively, to make sure that we're centered in serving and making sure that the gospel goes out. And it's the same heart that he not only gives to our youth, but he also gives it in missions, for he has been faithfully serving to the Roma people in Serbia for quite some time now, and we've asked him today on our final week of evangelism to teach about missions, and we thought, who, who better can teach us about the importance of evangelism through missions than, than Simon? And so we asked him, and he very, very graciously accepted, and I know he's excited to present to you. I'm excited to hear what he has to say. So Simon, would you come up and share a little bit about yourself and share about how missions has impacted your life and how it should be impacting our lives as Christians? Come on up. Thank you, Pastor Jeff, for a nice introduction. I really appreciate it. And also came to uh, come to this multi-purpose hall that turned into an audio uh, a studio, a video studio, I should say. Good morning, my online brother and sisters in Christ. May peace be with you always. First of all, I want to thank Pastor Eric 
for this opportunity to speak in front of the English congregation and also to our youth. Thank you, Pastor Jeff. It is an honor to speak on this joyous day as ACB, ACBC joined the kickoff of the annual Lottie Moon Christmas offering. It is such a meaningful movement to raise support for all the missionaries around the world. May, I, may the Holy Spirit move us to be a cheerful giver. Now, before I start, just a few words about myself. And I was born and raised in Hong Kong and came to the United States in July of 2000, sorry, 1976 and been living in Los Angeles metropolitan area ever since then. I married to my lovely wife, Suzelle, for 32 years. And in fact, we celebrated our anniversary just last week. And we have two sons. Ryan is turning 28 in a few days and Nathaniel is 25. Suzelle and I joined ACBC in February of 2016, and immediately we joined, we, we joined the YA, um, I should say, Youth Alive Ministry, uh, and then I joined the uh, Mission Committee uh, a few months later. And we certainly, feel, um, we certainly feel the love from our pastoral staff and also from our faithful brother and sister in Christ. Um, a little bit about my faith. My background is af actually Catholic when I was uh, growing up in Hong Kong. And thanks to our Lord, I was able to walk my faith with Suzelle. And we both were baptized as Catholic in 1987. And then 20 years later, we were baptized as Christian again. I'm, uh, I'm retired. Yes, I am unemployed after 36 years of working in the biopharmaceutical industry. A uh, bit about my mission experience. Thank you, Jesus, for leading us, and we've been serving our Lord in the mission field since 2009. For the most part, we serve in China. In the hot summer month of July, we spend three and a half weeks, typically across five different cities. We also have some experience from South Asia and also in Taiwan, as Pastor Jeff mentioned recently in Serbia. The title of my sharing today is Expand Your Horizon. Well, what do you mean by that? Well, just like all the devoted missionaries in the world, Jesus always widened my scope, my, my view, on how best to serve him when I were in the mission fields. With no exception, I always come home with more than what I expected from every single mission trip. As I reflect on this, Jesus has opened my eyes wide and let me seeing exactly how he built his kingdoms around the world in the areas that I served for the last 10 years. It is totally exceeding my expectation far much more different views than wh what I could have expected, what I could have imagined. Well, let's start it off with what else? Jesus' last command on earth that is recorded in chapter 28 in the book of Matthew. And Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for showing us how best to serve you through your great commission. Please help us to build our faith and grow in you every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Well, with no exception, every time when I read this great commandment, similar to the CMC, uh, the recent CMC global launch meeting in September, and also finishing the task meeting in October, they all reminded me how important this great commission is with a strong emphasis on all these action words. I don't know about you. Every t honestly, every time when I look at this, even today, it seems to be very overwhelming to me. And then I'm a practical person on top of it, right? Then, well, see, then what do, you, what, 
what is it what what is in it for me when I carry this great commission and out there in the world? Today I wish to put my emphasis of my sharing on this highlight orange highlighted area. There's no dispute about the obedient part of the Great Commission, but in between this commission, the Great Commission command, Jesus also said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. What an awesome identity statement for us followers. Not only he can heal, forgive sins, perform miracles, Jesus is assuring our faith and in him and reminding us that we can trust in him when we are called into mission because he's almighty and then as in ending jesus know exactly what we need out in the mission field and he said behold i am with you always to the end of the age it is such a blessing a privilege to walk with jesus in the mission field believe me such grace and promise had kept me and my family safe and put us in great serenity. It gave us such courage, particularly during the time when we were serving the underground churches in China. I believe all missionaries hang our faith and dedication on this word and draw on this word to fill our tank, even at times where there seems to be no hope or no open doors for his gospel in the area they reserved. It's like coming to a gourmet dinner. Don't just lay your eyes on the main course. Some of us do care more about the appetizer and dessert. So don't lose sight of God's promise when we follow the Great Commission. Now let's turn to God's grace a little bit closer. Let us take a look what God said to the Israelites before he hand down the Great Commission uh, I'm sorry, the, the Ten Commandments through Moses in Exodus chapter 20, verse 2. God said, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. Arguably, I view that this is the most critical verse in this chapter. Why? See, God brought the Israelites out of Egypt. God emphasized that the Israelites, to Israelites, that he is their God. He is the one who left them out from the pit. As always, God laid out to us that our choice to follow him about all this commandment is founded on nothing but his grace. Let me give you another example. I'm pretty sure that none of us would do a daily devotion using the California driver handbook. Why? Because it only tells you things what to do and things that you cannot do. See, brought, see God brought Israelites out of Egypt 3,500 years ago because of his love and grace. Today, our situation is no different. Jesus died on the cross for us, giving us the salvation, liberating us from our sin, So when it comes to the Great Commission, let us first think about His grace and that has been granted to us. Conversely, God also hand down the verdict for the collapse of the northern Israel kingdom in a similar tone. As says in 2 Kings 17, verse 7, and this, meaning the collapse of the northern Israel kingdom, occur because the people of Israel has sinned against the Lord their God who had brought them out of the land of Egypt. Similarly, the same verdict was handed down to the older generation of Israelites who left Egypt and could not enter the promised land as stated in several books of the Old Testament. It is, it is the result of not valuing God's grace and then sin and rebel against God. So next time when you and when us and we, when we meditate on God's word, treat it as the psalmist had described in Psalm 19, verse 7. 
more to be desire a day than go, even much fine go, sweeter also than honey and drippings of the honeycomb. In the case of the Great Commission, feel the blessing when you choose to walk with Jesus in the mission field. Now, I, want, I wish to share a couple examples on the point of the book, Isaiah 55, verse 9, with you about God's thoughts and waves are much greater than ours. I'm sure you have heard about this great mountain range of Alps crossing Europe. Now, this is the top view from, Pong, from Mount Pilatus near the city of Lucerne in Switzerland. I'm certain that we all agree the views from the mountain top is totally different from that of, uh, from the ground. Well, on your way up to the mountain top, don't just don't lose sight of the magnificent view that the nature has to offer, and also what Jesus has to offer in the mission field. Now, I still remember. I still remember my feelings when we took this picture in August two thousand and three. It is awesome. I was simply speechless when we took this picture at this iconic spot. So brother and sister, it is a similar way, a same way actually, when we are serving him in mission. Jesus would take us to the mountaintop and show up his kingdom in front of us and everything's in between. Now the older generation may remember this timetable this is a timeline for the downfall of communism in Eastern Europe and also through USSR between 1989 and 1981. I'm sorry, 91. Now the significance of this illustration is that there is no one living person could have predicted the, peace, the peaceful collapse of communism over a course of three years. I'm sure everybody, and this is the uh, Berlin Wall, then it was taken down into pieces. This is really a historical monument. I'm sure you're all very familiar with this popular 3D picture of the coronavirus, killing 1.4 million people and paralyzing the entire world in this year. Now, if I replace the CDC logo with a NASA logo and tell you that we found a new planet out there in the space a year ago, you may believe me. Because, see, a year ago, COVID-19, this term, does not exist in anyone's dictionary or on our radar screen. Today, we are all devastated by the impact of something that we cannot see, smell, or touch. Brother and sister, we are so limited in our view, knowledge, and wisdom. Let us extend ourselves and turn to Jesus because his way and thoughts are far greater than ours. He is omniscient and in control at all times. Next, I wish to share a few my personal testimony from previous mission trip that Jesus was there with us always. The year was 1996. Baxter Healthcare, the company I was working for at the time, was negotiating a joint venture with the local governments in the province of Henan to build a human plasma fractionation center. Well, as American Chinese, I was thinking, well, maybe I can volunteer to be an expatriate to help building this manufacturing plan. Well, so much about my plan, the plan didn't come through, and so much about going to China. Then in 2009, I was able to go to China. Only this time, I was a missionary, not a businessman. I always thought that most of the valuable lessons in life are learned outside of a classroom. So Suzelle and I encouraged our two boys to join the Boy Scout. Much like our Youth Alive parents today, I can certainly see a lot of training disciplines 
and outdoor skill learning over there. I even volunteer myself as a cup master of our Troop 168. Then during the years we were serving in China, Ryan and Nathaniel joined us in many, many trips. I remember in one summer, Ryan was a TA in a VBS class in Fuzhou. And he noticed something, uh, he, he noticed a girl was doing something really strange. What happened was that she would erase the entire page as soon as she's done writing and start over. So Ryan informed our pastor, and he also noticed the very same thing. So they went and approached the girl. The girl said, look, my family cannot afford additional paper for me. So my only other option is to erase and start over. I immediately saw water in Ryan's eyes as soon as he heard that. What a life lessons right there. There are plenty more examples where it came from. Brothers and sisters, God will take you and your children to places that you've never been before when we serve him in, him, uh, in his will because he promised to be with us always. Global Life Enrichment Center was founded in 1995 and immediately they inherit this Great Commission vision from Reverend Thomas Wang to serve the Roma people in Eastern Europe. And then ACBC joined GLEC as a mission partner to serve the local Chinese merchants and the Roma people in the city of Belgrade, which is the capital of, Bel uh, of Serbia. This is the Roma flag. This is the Roma people flag. The blue color represent heaven, green represent earth. The 16 spook red card view was designed to pay homage to the flag of India, their ancestry. When we visited Belgrade the first time, this is our first impressions about the Serbia people, I mean the Roma people. This is a picture of a typical living area in the center of Belgrade for the Roma people. Roma people live in shelter, pieces of wood and metal and cardboard, and that's how they build their houses. No toilet and all kids walk in barefoot. We know because we visited this place, poor, helpless, and forgotten. In August 2019, we came to this town called Lebane in southern Serbia. It's about eight, 180 miles south of Belgrade. We serve a week-long marriage enrichment camp there. You can see Yilong, Esther, Suzelle, and I were in this photo. We preach, share messages, and have great fellowship with the local Roma people. The Roma brothers and sisters, they are friendly, faithful, and cheerful. This is a beautiful, beautiful family of three generations, daughter, mother, and grandmother with Suzelle. Ever since then, we have a complete different view of the Roma people. You can join us too to experience what is, who are the real Roma people in this world. Jesus opened our eyes even further. We participate in a baptismal ceremony at Brestofo Lake. We witnessed 14 young and enthusiastic brother and sister and become Christian. I want to take this opportunity to invite you to come join us for an amazing missionary journey to see firsthand how Jesus bring his kingdom to a forgotten group of people. You can make a personal difference to Roma. How much more meaningful can it be and rewarding can it be when you submit your faith to Jesus for the Great Commission? 
I'd like to end my uh, sharing with you with Psalm 67. Verse 1 and 2 said, May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face to shine upon us that your way may be known on earth, your saving power among all nations. The psalmist reflect in this psalm with a thankful heart for what God has done to Israelites, the, the chosen people. He saw God's grace and mercy. He urged the people of Israel to spread the good news such that all nations and all people can receive the very same blessing from God. Today, you and I are the beneficiary of the salvation of Jesus at the cross. Let us also do our part and commit to deliver the Great Commission. In closing, please remember Jesus' promise about being with us until the end of the age, of the age when we are willing to expand our horizon. So stand up and be counted to share his good news to the end of the world. What do you get to lose? So take, take a test drive with Jesus and experience the grace yourself. Let us pray. Dear God, you send your only son to us and save us from our eternal death. Please help us to remember your grace and respond with a thankful and serving heart. May we find favor in your eyes. We pray all this in the name of Jesus Christ. Well, I thank you for your attention and may God be with you always. Thank you, Simon. Uh, you know, I, I'm just so pleased to hear from our missionaries and to hear not just that there are people out there somewhere that sometimes visit our church to say, look at all these things that I do that you'll never be able to do. That's not what missions is about. Mission, missions is about sharing the gospel with each one of us. And that's why we try to find people within our church who, who are doing that. And, it, you know, I was talking with Simon. He's been preparing for this for so long, and I remember talking with him. He said, Jeff, I, I want to share the Alps. And I thought, why would you want to do that? He said, because everyone can see the mountain. Everyone looks up from the bottom, looks up to the mountain. But when you get up, and you can see what God sees. And you can see the world, and you can see all the people that have a need for Christ. It, it shows just the level of need for us to share the gospel. We see the change that is brought to these people who can't afford paper who, or people who are, are forgotten by society and have to live in what we would call trash. And the Lord forgets them not. And the Lord is with us to go and proclaim the gospel because though the world may have forgotten, God has not forgotten. This is the depth of our need. And, and Simon, I don't know what level you, you think the youth can have involved with this Roma ministry, but I, I, I was sitting behind the, the camera and operating the PowerPoint, and I looked over at Pastor Eric, and when he, when Simon invited us, I said, <laughs> I pointed at me, I'm like, I'm doing this. <laughs> Let's advance our vision. Let's proclaim the love of Christ to more and let us decide that. I mean, let's be honest, we're not poor. We're not destitute. Can we not afford to sacrifice our time and our money to go and to proclaim? We certainly can. And I think we certainly should. So, Simon, thank you so much for touching our hearts and showing us the, de the great need and the depth of the gospel. So let's pray, and then we'll continue with worship. Dear Father, thank you for this session that Simon has given us. And Open our hearts, please. Open our hearts to love those whom you love. Father, we need not be 
nervous because you say that you are with us always. So what's our duty? Merely to go. We go. You really handle the rest. Father, it's that kind of security that makes the unqualified qualified. I, I don't have any reason to go. I'm not qualified to do anything. If we know the gospel, we are, and that's enough. Father, show us this, teach us this, and thank you for the opportunity to worship you by proclaiming your word. And Father, we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, let's stand together, if you want to, at home <laughs> one more time as we close our service today with worship. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassion, they fail not. As thy hast been, thou forever wilt be. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand has provided. Great is thy faithfulness, long to me. Thank God for His mercy and His faithfulness. And thank you, Simon, uh, for sharing with us today. And uh, thank you for um, availing yourself to, to share with us uh, from Matthew 28, as well as your, ex your experiences on missions. 
And I had an interesting experience just now when Pastor Jeff uh, pointed to himself during the call for missions. That's the first time I've ever heard a call for missions and people usually point to me. And they'll be like, no, no, you go, no, you go, no, you go. This is the first time I saw someone point to himself and say, hey, I need to go. And that's, that's an example for all of us that we, you, me, we need to go. We need to look at ourselves and say, hey, missions is not just for the other person, it's for me also. Well, now is the time for announcements. And as usual, if you, this is your first time uh, listening to our online service, you're most welcome to take a picture of the QR code or go to the website and click on the welcome tab and fill in our connect form. Uh, on this, there will be different questions you can ask us and we will get back to you and we'll connect with you. Next, a reminder that there's three options for online giving now available. Take a picture of the QR code there or go to the website uh, listed there. A reminder that outdoor service is ongoing. Uh, we have uh, physically distant chairs six feet apart. And uh, please do wear masks uh, if you come. It is a requirement. And do not come if you're feeling unwell. And if you bring your kids, please keep them with you. And uh, if for those who want to sign up for the outdoor service, here is the Eventbrite uh, registration, um, which we actually need to change because uh, the last service is the 29th of November. So let me... Uh, I'll email it out. I'll, I'll email out the new link uh, to you. Don't use this link because it'll be obsolete uh, by the time you see this recording, which is okay. Uh, next uh, reminder for those with kids uh, in the Kids uh, Bible Church that there is a parent-teacher conference on the 4th of December from 7.30 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. It is during the family community group uh, Zoom time. And uh, you, uh, if you need the Zoom link, please drop an email to acbc.english, acbc.englishcongregation at gmail.com and we'll get it to you. And Minister Jing uh, will share with you uh, the vision, testimony, action plan, as well as uh, have a Q question and answer session. Oh, can we have the camera to me for a while? And uh, this, is, this one's not in the slides. I just want to uh, let you be aware for, your, for the parents who have kids in the second to fifth grade. Uh, to, today, there's going to be a Thanksgiving um, get-together with the Kids Bible Church at 2.30 p.m. to 3.30 p.m. 2.30 p.m. to 3.30 p.m. online. The Zoom ID is 853-3488-8488. So if you didn't get, get that, don't panic. Just pause. You know, YouTube, you can pause. And let me read it to you again. So pause and let me read to you the Zoom ID again. 853-3488-8488. It's for all those with kids uh, from the second to fifth grade that will be a Thanksgiving reunion uh, Zoom meeting later today at 2.30. Next, uh, adult Sunday school. So please pay attention. This is for the adults, not the youth. For adult Sunday school, we are restarting uh, our Sunday school today at 11.15 a.m. We're going through the Book of Kings. So we're starting today. It's uh, Everybody's taking a break for this Sunday. And we are actually restarting our Sunday school at 11.15 a.m. Uh, first and Second Kings, the Zoom ID as well as the password is there on the screen. So I'll see you guys uh, later at 11.15 a.m. But for the youth, okay, this is for the youth Sunday school. Uh, you have no Sunday school today. So please take a break for the youth, okay? If you're adults, you do have Sunday school. Uh, so this is, but for the youth, you will not have Sunday school uh, today. But the adults, yes. If you're an adult listening to this, don't get confused. You still have Sunday school. If you're a youth, no Sunday school today. Uh, and, and a reminder that next week uh, is combined service at 9.15 a.m. So next week is the first Sunday of the month. As usual, for the first Sundays, Sundays of the month, we have a combined uh, English ministry service. So next week is going to be a combined service at 9.15 a.m. And also there's an English congregation Thanksgiving end of year online party this coming Saturday on the 5th of December. So it's going to be before dinner because we don't provide dinner. So you can come for the meeting online from 4 to 4 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. And there's going to be a time of sharing from God's Word, a time of uh, hearing Thanksgiving testimonies, as well as online games. So we're going to uh, play some online games together. So the Zoom meeting ID as well as the password, which is very simple to remember, is listed there on the screen if you need to. Pause the button and take down the Zoom meeting ID as well as the password. So it's a great opportunity to see everybody again, everybody in the congregation, everybody in the ministry, to just see one another again. So that will be this coming Saturday at 4 p.m. Now, this week is the International Missions Prayer Week uh, from this Sunday to next Sunday. Uh, it is the Lottie Moon Christmas offering collection time. Our church goal is for our members to contribute at least uh, at least $14,500 to the Lottie Moon Christmas offerings. If you are contributing, 
Please make your check to ACBC and on the check indicate Lottie Moon Christmas offering. Uh, so the church will collect uh, all the donations and we will send one check uh, to the Lottie Moon Christmas offering. Uh, now on the website uh, listed is also tools for us to pray uh, during this week for the international missions. Uh, so if you, so you can pause the, uh, the, pause the video and t uh, take down the web link. Uh, now for the each day, uh, there's a different video on the website as well as prayer pointers uh, that you can go through uh, as you pray for international missions for that particular day. So there's going to be a few days. Each day there's a video. Watch the video and look at the prayer pointers and pray according to those prayer po pointers for international missions. And just so that you can have a head start, we are going to play the day one video, uh, which is today, 29th of November. So let's hit the button for the video. Nani ya mawai shikuwa na polisi? Nani ya mawai kuriwa na chawa? Nani ya mawai lala njaa kwa street? Nani ya mawai dhurumiwa kimapenzi ama anajua mtu wa mawai dhurumiwa kwa street? Kudhurumiwa kimapenzi? Whenever I was hanging out with the boys, people would come to me and be like, you know, these boys are dangerous. You know, these boys are going to hurt you. And you know, you shouldn't be here. And they're just despised by everyone. Only a few understand that these are just normal children who have been forced to the streets with different circumstances. They're not loved. They're actively insulted and abused and kicked. Show them love and they will respond with love. Show them a bad attitude, and they will repel from you. They are just children. In 2009-2010, I was serving as a photographer with the International Mission Board. And one of my last assignments was a story on a young lady working with street kids in Nairobi, Kenya. I would spend from 4 in the morning to 10 at night with this group of 20 kids getting to know them, hearing why they were on the streets. And the whole time I was like, oh my gosh, the Lord is gonna call somebody to work with these kids. Like somebody needs to come do something. So I finally just said, Lord, are you calling me to go work with those boys? And I had peace. Like I knew that that's what I was being called to do. Hopefully 13 boys will come to the shelter this morning um, and they'll be rescued off the streets. Ukotari. Honestly, there were so many years that I worked on the streets in Nairobi without a place to take boys. I would just get to know them and help them like in the small ways that I could. Um, and the fact that God has provided the shelter um, and given us opportunity to be rescuing kids off the streets and make a real difference in their life, it's really exciting. Like, life will not be the same for these boys. And Naivasha Children's Shelter, our mission is to rescue them from the streets, to help them to be rehabilitated, to get off drugs, to go through trauma counseling. And as much as we see that these kids need food and they need education and they need a bed to sleep in, they do, they need all of those things. But what they really need is the love of a family. They need to belong somewhere. They need to be well cared for. They need to know that they're loved. And we show them that through the love that the social workers give them here. We show them that by pointing to the love of Christ, and we show them that by putting them back in their family, where they belong, with people who love them. One of our social workers, Elphis, has spent hours looking for one kid that's lost, that he wants to be able to have a new life. Um, and it's not just Elphis. All of the social workers at the shelter are amazing. They go to the streets every day and every night, they get to know the boys, they get to hear their story, know why they came to the streets, know what happened in their family, and offer them a way out. I talk to them, I make them understand that despite everything that you're going through, there is hope and there is someone who cares. That's why I'm here. I had seen enough of orphanages, I had worked with enough organizations that I knew the best place for any child is in their family. And we don't just take them home and drop them off. What we do is we spend a lot of time going to the family and finding out what sent that child to the streets? Was it the influence of peers? Was it poverty at home? And then spend a lot of time working on that issue with the family. Every child that's placed back at home, they follow them until they reach the age of 18 or they finish school. 
just to make sure that child has no chance of going back to the streets. Everything is fine, they have enough food, they're in school. They invest their lives in these children. I'm sure that these kids, if given a chance and a place to make their lives, for sure they are going to change and make a better generation to come. I just want to sincerely say thank you. It is because of Southern Baptist that I am able to be here. The shelter is able to keep running. I'm able to serve in this way because of your gifts to the Lottie Moon Christmas Offering and the Cooperative Program. And it's miraculous to see a child that was alone living on the streets and hopeless uh, reunited with their family. This is the model that works. This is what helps to get kids back home where they should be and where they want to be. And that, that was a video of the Naivasha Children's Shelter in Kenya. Uh, so that's day one. And the prayer pointers are, pray that the boys are reconciled with their families. The families will also find hope in Jesus. And also pray that God will bless the work of the shelter staff as they reach out in love to the boys who are hurting. Uh, so in your quiet time today, please do pray uh, for them. So that's the, the, the process. Each day there's a different video on a missions organization or missionaries in a different country. And then there will be prayer pointers. Uh, so do let us join together in this coming week to pray for international missions. And all that the donations that you're giving to the Lottie Moon Christmas, Christmas offering will be sent uh, abroad to all these different missions organizations as well as missionaries to help them in sharing the good news of Jesus and spreading God's love uh, to the people around the world. Next on our list of announcements is the Chinese Missions Conference. So this will be from December 28th to December 30th. So the timing uh, is there. So it's uh, at, at night on uh, December 28th, as well as afternoon to nighttime on December 29th, as well as December 30th. And so there's uh, quite a few uh, keynote speakers, uh, David Platt, Francis Chan, Wayne Chan, as well as, as, well as Christopher Yuan. I would encourage you strongly to listen to uh, Christopher, Christopher Yuan, whom uh, I've also shared before uh, during one of my uh, sermons. Uh, now, to sign up, there's actually three very simple steps. The church is sponsoring uh, the fees uh, for this conference. So there's three very simple steps. Step number one, email your name, telephone number, and email address to Anna. Her email is listed there. Uh, that's step number one. And step number two, uh, a registration code will be emailed to you sometime in early uh, December. By the way, email your name, telephone, and email, 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 email address to Anna by the end of 5th of December. By the end of 5th of December. And a registration code will be e emailed to you. And the third step is go to the CMC website, which is listed there, and register with this code, and you will be able to attend this conference for free, this online conference. Uh, for free. So instead of having to drive to San Diego or, or some other place this year, we can attend it from the comfort of our own homes online. Uh, so those three simple steps, email your name, telephone, email address to Anna, uh, then a registration code will be sent to you. And using that registration code, go to the CMC website and register using that code. And we can go to the conference, online conference for free. Next, a uh, reminder that we are planning to have a team of adults to work with the youth for a community outreach event sometime in early 2021. And uh, so if you're interested in this, uh, please uh, drop an email to acbc.englishcongregation at gmail.com. Basically, you'll brainstorm to together with the youth and also plan for this uh, community outreach event so that we can help our neighbors uh, during these times of uh, uncertainty. And also a reminder that December is uh, Evangelistic uh, Christmas Sermons. And uh, next week, we have a get another guest speaker, Dr. Richard Cook from Lagos Seminary. He'll be here to share an Evangelistic uh, Christmas uh, sermon with us. So you are free to invite your friends uh, to view uh, the sermon online. And uh, Dr. Richard Cook uh, will be speaking. And last but not least, prayer requests. Do continue to pray for the recovery and safety of our community from the pandemic. Uh, during this time. Also pray for the job and financial security uh, for our church members. 
uh, I also pray for the safety of the outdoor services. And last but not least, God willing, when, when we do reopen, pray, pray for those reopening plans that we'll do it uh, safely and uh, smoothly as we transition back uh, to church. And now for a time of doxology. Let's stand. Before we get to our benediction, I do have one more announcement. Uh, for the CMC registration, for the youth who want to register, we do have a separate registration link. Be sure to uh, follow the instructions. I'll be sending it out to the parents groups in WeChat and Line and, and via email and all that. So there will be no opportunity for you to miss it. Just if you want to go, make sure you let your parents know and make sure that they follow that registration and... Uh, but other than that, you guys are still covered under the church registration uh, tickets. So let's go ahead and do our benediction. And the, uh, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Thank you so much for coming to our service today. We just pray that you continue to develop a heart for missions. It is the thing that got you saved. And it is the thing by which we can see many others saved as well. Thank you for coming this week, and until next week, God and his peace be with you.